Hello students, good evening to all of you. Hi Palak, Swayam, Vaishnavi, Neetu, Suman, Deokant. How are you all? Hi Kavya. How are you all? How was your day? I welcome all of you to the SST YouTube session. Come on, tell me how your preparation is going. Good, all of you are doing well. That's great. That's good to know. Hi, Shreyas. Hi, Satvik. I'm doing great, Swayam. Thank you for asking. I look dull today. Actually, I'm having a bit of eye infection. That is why. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yes or no? I'm fine, Shalindra. Hi, Nilima. Hi, Kamal. You have your pre post from day after tomorrow. All the best for it. What about the others? Tell me, come on. How, how did your pre posts go? Thank you so much for your wishes. Tell me. Hi, Chandan. Over. So the results are out or not? Vintage day after tomorrow is going to end. So all the best for the upcoming examinations. Okay. So for everyone, the examinations went well. Then be all the best for your pre boards day after tomorrow. Fine. So as I have told you all before also, whoever have completed with their uh, pre boards I wish you all the best for your results. I hope you all have done well. Even if you all think you all haven't done well, still you all have time. Okay. To rectify your mistakes. Okay, Vaishnavi does really good mark, 77. Okay, fine. And apart from that, those of y'all examinations are approaching a pre boards I wish you all the best for that. Fine? Okay. Mamta Center and State Relations, please go through our website for the same. Fine, the reason is because today we'll be doing history. Okay, and we have already done the federalism chapter. Fine? Okay, chalo. So now let us start off today's session. So today, which chapter are we going to do? Today, we have selected history. Yes or no? Today, we have selected history. Here, we are going to do three chapters today. Can you tell me why we are doing three chapters? And why not two or why not one? Tell me. So I am to study all the tips and tricks. I will give it to you in the last class. Okay. All the tips and tricks. I'll be giving it to you in the last class. Very good. Yo, because of the choice. Yes or no? Out of these three chapters, you need to select one. They are optional. You either need to select making of a global world, either industrialization or your work life and leisure. Yes? No, Purvasha. It's not because syllabus is vast. Because these are the three options that are going to come. Okay? Fine? So today we are going to do history, making of a global world, age of industrialization and work life and leisure. Fine? Okay. So now, first of all, let us look at the important topics for the these three chapters. Fine? So in making of a global world, remember, there were two topics or two case studies you can say that uh india also we have learned uh, and then we have learned about britain also yes or no fine so we started with silk route remember prior to 19th century what was the scenario how silk route was used to transfer goods exchange of goods ideas etc fine then how food culture had a role diseases had a role in the cultural exchange Fine. Then the role of technology. Remember refrigerated fridges. Uh, 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 if you all have selected this chapter, of course, you would know. Fine. Then we have the rinderpest, the cattle plague, indentured labor, the cultural fusion, then the Great Depression, effect of Great Depression, and how did they overcome? Yes or no? After the Great Depression was over, the Breton was institution. 
fine so these are some of the important topics for making of a global world coming to age of industrialization we need to remember the relationship between the towns and the countryside okay then difference between proto industrialization and the factory system how did the pace of industrial change occurred the plight of the workers yes the industrial workers the manchester goods and the indian textiles and lastly the market for goods okay fine then the third chapter work life and leisure here we have learned about the case studies on which one london as well as bombay yes or no in age of industrialization we have learned about india and britain Yes or no? In work life and leisure, we have learned about India and Bombay. So first, we need to learn about industrialization, the features of it, how did it rise in the modern city, the marginal groups living in the modern cities, then the social change that has occurred due to industrialization, leisure and consumption, Bombay, which is the city of dreams, Maya Nagari. and lastly the challenges and threats to the environment these are certain important topics clear okay now let us come to the one marker questions fine so these are very simple one marker questions that i have selected for all of you fine so the first one is your what was the time period for the first world war everyone knows that i think so yes or no the time period for first world war when did it take place tell me when did it take place it took place uh, from the year all of you know yes or no it's from 1914 to 1918 exact date to be precise uh they can't remember who say we have learned chutney music that is the cultural fusion okay fine so from 28th july 1914 to 11th november 1918 okay this was the time period for your first world war fine okay and from which year did the second world war take place tell me tell me second world war when did it take place that's a homework for you let me see who knows it okay coming to the second question who had set up the first indian jute mill in calcutta okay who had set up the first indian jute mill in calcutta fine it was by said hukumchan okay he was one of the entrepreneurs of india fine alongside dwarkana tagore and other people fine sethu kumchan was the first person to set up the first indian jute mill in calcutta which year it was in the year 1917 okay very good yes it is 1939 to 1945 for second world war very good fine then coming to the third question in which year was the first textile mill established in bombay very easy 1854 okay this question is also there in the age of industrialization chapter fine okay these are the three one marker questions that i have selected for you all fine easy next we have the three marker questions okay hi harish first one is what were the corn laws and why were they scrapped and what were the results of their abolition fine i'll come to that minish don't worry fine what are corn laws why were they scrapped and what were the results of their abolition fine so firstly remember corn laws what are they very good vaishnavi it means that there was a ban or restriction on the import of corn in britain fine now what happened 
why were why do we have trading relations with others so because this was the time globalization was taking place yes or no we are having relationship with other na nations also making of a global world palak then secondly industrialization is setting up yes or no people are migrating from one place to another like from especially from the rural areas to the urban areas fine so now when you were in the rural areas whatever you used to produce after selling you used to keep it little bit for yourself so that you can consume it now if you have migrated to the towns now you have to purchase food yes or no whatever be it corn be it wheat rice anything you have to purchase it yes so now that is why there was important exports happening in britain however you know the local producers what they thought they said that they asked the government to put a ban on the import of corn fine these were known as the corn laws because if there were restriction fine now what is going to happen if import is not there so whatever is locally available to us we are going to purchase from there now whatever locally is available we will buy it and that particular person is going to earn the money all the profit yes or no that is why all these local producers they started selling the grains at very high price because of the increasing demand of food fine now imagine import is less fine now the demand is more and supply is less what is going to happen to your price very good renita the prices are going to get high yes or no so that is why the prices went up and it was very difficult for the people to afford these expensive food grains before moving to the urban areas they were solely dependent on whatever they used to produce so they did not know the difference but when they had to purchase at like skyrocketed prices it was very difficult for them for the survival so that is why they had asked the government that no is better you scrap the corn laws okay fine so now when the scrapping of corn laws happen what is going to happen the next step what is the next step that is going to happen of course now import will start yes or no so now they opened the markets for imported food grains and these imported food grains were quite cheaper and now because of this import everyone could get sufficient amount of grains and hence the british the locally produced uh like the peasants or the farmers they could not compete with the imported goods fine and because of this the local producers many of them they had lost their jobs and hence they migrated to the cities in search of new jobs <laughs> clear yes all of you this is a reason they had to migrate because of the huge competition finally losing their jobs and migrating to a new place for new job okay now coming to the next question fine the next question is what are some of the technological innovations that facilitated the growth of industries in europe okay what are the technological innovations that facilitated the growth of your uh, growth of industries in europe fine cotton was something like it was the like inception you can say fine it was the first raw material that was developed by the industries fine and that were used by the industries and finally made into a product fine because cotton is something that we use it we like cotton clothes to wear it yes or no because they are very comfortable fine so now when industries have come into place raw materials are there of course you need to produce more yes or no now imagine if there were no technological innovations you still have to work with your hand 
what was the point of industrialization happening you need new and new technologies for example the smartphones also which we use after a year new features come up yes or no there are add ons so many things happen yes this is from the chapter age of industrialization shreya fine shreya so some of the technological innovations that happen with the coming up of industrialization was firstly the water frame okay the water frame this was commencement means beginning okay water frame was created by richard arkwright okay he created the cotton mill where people could run the spinning could take place with the help of water frame or the water uh, water wheels now water could produce energy yes or no so it was very economical as well as helpful fine the next one was the invention of the spinning jenny okay spinning jenny who invented it it was james hargreaves this also helped in more and more production of goods then then next we have the flying shuttle this was another invention okay now more and more uh, spins could take place with the help of the flying shuttle fine they could wove the yarn into a cloth at a very much faster rate fine and then lastly samuel crompton's spinning mill also made it possible to produce a much more stronger thread fine so all these technological inventions helped in the increasing of the cotton textiles all over the world okay fine yes you can give the example of spin in a steam engine also fine these are few options which i give it to you all this gives you an idea how you can write the answer you can use this points as well as the points which you have in your bucket list fine okay then coming to the last three marker question from work life and leisure that we have is the what are the positive impacts of the underground railways okay what are the positive impacts of the underground railways fine right? so underground railways were introduced in london in which year in 1863 okay in 1863 the underground railways were introduced and this facilitated for the commutation of people okay it became very easy yes or no now when you have the metro cities also if you are living in the metro cities you see that communication is so easy like you get up at a point and their connection is so far far fine from one place to another you can reach at a much faster rate is economical it is cheap also yes i uh, just for example take the delhi metro fine delhi metro connects to the ncr regions it connects to faridabad it connects to ghaziabad gurgaon noida etc yes or no it's faster it's economical you can reach from one place to another yes it made people to leave their houses and go to far off places also to work for example in london they could come from the outskirts people living in the outskirts to the main city and commute for work yes from the outskirts to the city fine then underground railways of course they reduced the time of traveling as i have already mentioned to you and made it like it was a very convenient means for them fine okay then next was it helped in the expansion of the city as well fine it helped in the expansion of the sitting a city as well why because if you are living at one place you are connected to other places also yes now maybe age uh, like almost 20 years back a person who is living in north delhi thinking of going to uh, like faridabad was a huge task 
yes or no but however now if you see it's so easy it just takes an hour or so yes it takes an hour and so there's no traffic jam you know it's a fixed time that you will reach and the cost is how much 50 to 60 rupees fine yes it also helped in reducing or removing the social distinctions how because now the underground railways facilitated and people from all over the classes, caste, gender, they came together. They sat together in all the compartments. There were no single compartment, okay, reserved for, okay, high class people, low class people. Everyone came together for their work or if they had to travel from one place to another, they sat together. Fine. This reduced the differences between the different class groups, people. Fine. And thus it became a lifeline of London. The underground railways became a lifeline of London because it helped to connect them to other major towns also. Clear all of you? Yes. Now coming to the five marker question that we have. Fine. This question is from Making of a Global World. Discuss the impact of render pest on the people's livelihood and the loss of economy in Africa. Fine. Now, render pest, when did it arrive? What is render pest? It is cattle plague. Okay, it is cattle plague plague fine so it was carried by all the infected cattle that were imported from asia to feed whom the italian soldiers who wanted to invade a small african region known as eritrea okay which is known as eritrea now rinderpest is a cattle plague which was infected in Africa in the 1880s, fine. And it was carried by the infected cattle from Asia, which were imported, fine, to feed the Italian soldiers who wanted to invade a small region of Africa known as Eritrea. And what were the impact of the Rindo Pass on the livelihood and the local economy in Africa? If you remember, most of the people of Africa, you know, they were very self-sufficient and their livelihood depended on the cattle, on agriculture. Now, because of this infectious diseases, okay, it was communicable. So, Rindo Pass killed almost 90% of the cattle in Africa, fine, leaving people with no jobs fine because their main source of occupation livelihood was agriculture okay cattle rearing now most of the cattle were dead fine it lost their livelihoods as i have already mentioned fine it strengthened the colonial government's power and the africans were forced to get into the labor market and earlier they were reluctant to do what was the reason of the reluctant because they were self-sufficient and they knew that if they worked if they started working for the britishers they are going to lose their own livelihood their payment is also get, going to get reduced but now they did not have any option because most of their cattle they used to rear they lost their lives and because of that they lost their livelihood also living no option they had to enter the market the labor market under the british government fine and because of this the european colonizers could strengthen their base okay because the uh, because the africans now they did not have any option they entered into the forced labor market under the british government now their base was stronger Okay, no, they did not want to do it, but they were forced. They did not want to. They refused. Reluctant means they did not want to. Fine, but they didn't have any option. And that is the reason they had to now subdue themselves to the British government. Fine, clear? Okay. 
coming to the next question from age of industrialization discuss some of the major problems faced by the indian cotton weavers in the 19th century okay now by the time 19th century we all know that industrialization has set in yes or no by the 19th just a second fine it has set in fine now initially if you remember when uh, britishers like when britishers were not there what we used to do we used to send our finished product we used to have trading relations with other nations our finished product used to be sent exported to other nations they used to purchase it and we used to get the profit yes or no fine however now once they have come here and then the industrialization also happened they thought that why should we get like why should we purchase the finished products from india fine rather we can do one thing why not we purchase the raw materials from india at a cheaper rate we'll export them fine we'll make the finished product and then send back the same product back to india yes or no so what is going to happen ultimately we are at loss we are selling the raw materials the thing which is needed for the production of the good and then the final product is only sold to us at a at a rate and we have to purchase them yes so this was the huge problem that is how they could incur more and more profit raw materials at a cheaper rate whatever they used to export back to india that way also they used to get a two way profit fine so first thing what happened was that there was decline of the textile exports from india as i had already mentioned you now there was slowly slowly decline of the exports from india fine because of this the local market shrank okay the local market shrank and it started getting filled with the manchester imports now the finished products which were sent from england back to india fine out then now all of us know isn't it something which you make with hand and something which is machine made which is uh, expensive tell me which is expensive something which is made with hands glutted means filled okay it means filled too much of it now come on tell me something which is handmade and something which is machine made which is very good yes handmade things are more expensive than machine made now machine made is made for the masses at huge quantities handmade is something very intricate you make it in limited supply yes or no so these machine made goods were very less cost okay they were very cheaper now because of this cheap cost of the goods the indian weavers could not compete with them because the handmade goods or the goods which were woven by the indian weavers were expensive compared to the manchester goods fine by 1860s weavers had to face a new problem now what was the new problem they could not get sufficient quantity of raw cotton the good quality raw cotton they did not get it what is the reason because the good quality raw co cotton was now taken okay these were being exported these were being imported by the uh, england okay initially what happened they used to take little bit help from usa also but because there was a civic war civil war that was going on now their trading relations were cut off so what did they decide is better we know india is our colony so they will always be ready to help us now colony when they are our colony we have a authority power on them so we will get it at cheaper price so they turned to india now they took all the good quality cotton at a lower cost now whatever little was available now the indian weavers needed it but because the demand was so more in india and supply was so less the prices were very high which was not able when the indian weavers were not able to afford it okay 
Fine. So these were the problems which were faced by the Indian cotton weavers. Now coming to the last question of the session, describe the steps which were used to clean up London during the 19th century. Clear all of you? What's the question? The steps taken to clean London. Okay, which were the steps that were taken? Remember, uh, for London, we have learned about the tenements. Tenements means what? These are the small occupied rooms, more than four to five people. In Bombay, we know these ten small tenements are known as the chawls. Yes or no? In Bombay, these are known as chores these are small small rooms which were occupied by more than three to four members yes very unhygienic very congested localities very good roomy fine so first attempt that was made was to spread the tenements to the outskirts of the city okay these were attempted to take over to the outskirts of the city fine they wanted more and more parks, more and more green spaces so that the pollution could be reduced. Fine. An area known as Green Belt was created in London for this reason. Fine. So in this Green Belt area, there were parks and greenery spaces. Then the architect Ebenezer Howard, what did he design? He designed the concept of the Garden City. Okay, the architect Ebenezer Howard, he designed the concept of the garden city, which was full of trees and plants, where in which people could live as well as work there. Fine. Then pollution-free life was attempted for the city dwellers so that they can live with the, like merge with the city as well as have a close relation with the nature as well. Because like we people, what do we do? You must have seen that, yes or no? We clear out the area of land, fine, we cut the trees to put up a hoarding. And what do we write in the hoarding? Save trees, stop deforestation. Yes or no? So that's the irony. Like we ourselves are doing it and then we are advertising saying that, no, please stop deforestation. Fine. So we need to know the importance of the trees. We need to have a small, like a close bonding with the nature. That's why it's a request. You know, I have I used to tell my batches also that even if it's your birthday, it's your parents' anniversary, you always make a point at least to plant one sapling. Okay, it really helps to clean the environment, at least one initiative you are taking. If you start doing it, your cousins will do it, then their cousins will do it. It will become like a chain. Yes or no? Fine. And lastly, realizing the necessary of the good housing for the city dwellers. Now the government started building single family cottages. Okay. So in this cottages, a single family could live, which were compact, but they were very convenient. Not like the one room tenements. Fine. So maybe it was like a two bedroom apartments where the small families could live. This is how the government tried to clean up London. Rent control was also introduced. Very good, Sashi. You can also put that point. Once anywhere, at least you can get an indoor uh, indoor plant also for yourself. Yes or no? Of course. That's what, Rumi. That's the irony. Yes or no? See, planting saplings, you can do it in your garden. Even if you are living in a society, there will be a small garden. Outdoor plants also, you can keep it in your balcony, in your house. Indoor plants also, you can keep it. So many items. These are small, small initiatives. You can take it. For this, we do not need to go and protest, start the movement. Fine? Okay? So this is there for today's session we have completed the uh like the third section of your history the last portion left for your history is print society and novel society that will be next week okay so i hope to see you in tomorrow's session and i hope this session was helpful for you all okay and please remember all of you 
to get the what to get the pdf do you all take it or not the link is given below yes or no the link is given below from where you will get the top questions fine so all of you take care bye bye i shall meet you again next class is tomorrow lunch do not do selective study swayam okay read everything be thorough make notes of what you write easy do more and more of the sample papers past year papers it will be helpful for you thank you so much for your wishes i wish you all the best for whoever's examinations are approaching take care of yourself also of your health too okay drink water eat food go out for walking take breaks between studies okay watch tv doesn't matter fine study i'm not saying spend your time watching tv only but yes in your leisure time do watch tv go out for walks play games okay bye bye take care all of you enjoy your evening i shall meet you again okay fine bye bye